And now, your go-to source for year-round fantasy hockey advice, DFS, and betting coverage. This is NHL Fantasy on Ice, presented by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. Incredibly, for some of you, your fantasy playoffs get underway today. It's our duty to prepare you for the battle ahead, brought to you by our good friends over at Skip. It's time for another edition of NHL Fantasy on Ice, Week 23, Waiver Wire Edition. It's Nick Alberga, Pete Jensen, and Anna Dua with you. What's going on, Pete? What's up, Nick? Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL, and we'll look at the schedule. We'll break some ties for you, Anna, right? And we'll put you in the right direction to hopefully hoist that Stanley Cup a fantasy, whatever you want to call it, your uh, your trophy. It seems like so many teams, guys, are still in the mix that there's a lot of value on all of these teams to take a look at to help you get a boost with the playoffs coming around in your fantasy league. Yeah, I would say firstly, I, I think the schedule, and I don't know how you guys navigate through your fantasy playoffs, but the schedule manipulation is big for yours truly. So that's where I want to start. Uh, there are 54 games in total this week, but I think the important thing to bring up is is every team will play at least four or at least three games, if not four. So the four game teams you want to look at Buffalo, Carolina, Edmonton, Jersey, the Islanders, Ottawa, Philly, Seattle, uh, Tampa, Toronto, Washington, and Winnipeg. Those are the uh, four game teams or 12 of them. The rest of the league play three times. So, uh, it, I guess it's a good week, Pete, um, in terms of trying to navigate the schedule because you don't have any of those lame duck like two game weeks. Right. And I also wanted to mention like that we all feel strongly about the spoiler role and stuff like that, especially when teams, bad teams are playing these teams in the East where it seems like nobody seems to want the third spot in the Metro, Anna, or the second wild card spot. So you could roll some of these guys on Ottawa, on Anaheim, on Columbus, Alex Nylander comes to mind and just uh, kind of roll with the spoiler role and destroying someone else's season. Yeah, at this point, I think guys like even the Columbus Blue Jackets are going to be like, we're still in the mix, but given yeah. what's going on in the Metropolitan Division. But Pete, bringing up Alex Nylander is exactly where I wanted to start this episode off on because he's a new player. Like all of a sudden with this Blue Jackets team, he's just like, back to what everyone expected him to be eight goals in 12 games and it's not stopping I feel like in a way why would you not stream him when he's hot Nick yeah you're right and we talked about this last week I think on the uh, NHL action collab just the the shot prop and then it went to die this week and I think it's too late on Alex Nylander I think a week ago was the play for Nylander having said that I think the um, you know, overall exposure to the top line with good row and Jenner, and that's great news. Uh, eight goals in 12 games so far. Who would have thunk it, eh? Uh, Emil Bemstrom for Alex Nylander, maybe the trade of the season, eh, Pete? <laughs> yeah, and you're going to see some wacky stuff, too, in the fantasy playoffs like you always do. Like, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but, like, we might be talking, like, two weeks from now, like, oh, over this two-week stretch, Alex Nylander outperformed William Nylander or some crazy stuff like that. It always seems to happen. So, you know, have a short memory and come into this and pick up guys that are hot and roll with it. Don't be uh, harping on a guy that you drafted in the top 100 overall that hasn't been the caliber player you were hoping for all season. Uh, Cut the cord as quick as you can on some of these slumping guys. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with Nick about the time for Alex Nylander being over because he had one game where he <laughs> wasn't hitting four or five shots on goal and he still got two. So I don't know. Like he's looked really, really solid as of late and I'm not doubting him. He's still readily available. So take a look at him. Yeah, the price is just juice for me. A three game week for Columbus, a shot prop. Just uh, I was talking about that. I just I've been hitting that for a couple weeks, and now the price is so juice because everybody's on Nylander. But I I think you guys are right. Like I love the advice. Uh, I think you can't be married to a file anymore. Like a guy mm-hmm. always comes up for me this time of year is like Chris Letang. Uh, I traded for this guy at my deadline. He just hasn't produced to my liking. Guys like that, I wouldn't be concerned about in standard non keeper leagues. Like I think you have to jump bait. Um, I know everybody's different when it comes to the schedule. You guys know I like talking about it a lot this time of year, and it's brought me success in the past. But I think Nylander is a perfect example of a player who is so hot right now that you can't not pick him up, especially if it favors. And you look at the schedule when it comes to Columbus. So I like that look quite a bit this week. Uh, Owen Tippett is another guy on the list this week, Pete. Uh, 64% rostered around there in standard Yahoo leagues. Last three games, two goals, three assists, five points. And Philadelphia is like one of those teams. Do you want a playoff spot or do you not want one? 
Yeah, I mean, he's he gives them a puncher's chance. He's the heartbeat of that team. Nobody would argue otherwise. And he's been on our waiver wire list a couple times this year just because of some injuries around him, some different production trends. But he's as uh, steady as it gets. And, you know, you're also looking at other guys at the trade deadline that are, you know, flying under the radar. We talked about Kuznetsov a lot. He's still only 23% rostered even after four points. 10 shots, one power play point in his past three games. So he's heating up since the return of Gensel. There's also another guy that I liked at the time of the trade deadline, Anna, Jack Roslovic, fitting in nicely with the Rangers over the past couple of games. And that team is just so consistent. Yeah, the New York Rangers, I mean, they had one of the toughest schedules this past week, and they still came out looking good. They won back-to-back games. They were 6-3-1 and one in their last 10. They, I was at the Garden yesterday. They absolutely demolished the New York Islanders. And on the second leg of a back-to-back in an afternoon game, this team still looked ready to go, and Jack <laughs> Roslovic is maybe the answer that they were hoping for. I know they wanted a bigger-name guy, but... Top line right wing placement. Mika Zibanejad's showing up now too with Chris Kreider. This is a no brainer for me. The New York Rangers are looking really deadly and legit right now. I think they're at least contending to get as high up in the Eastern Conference standings as they can before the postseason. And Roslovic's going to be a big part of that, Nick. Yeah, that's what we call a plum assignment in the fantasy world. I love the value DFS standpoint there. And I think the biggest difference with the Rangers the last couple months, Igor Shesterkin has been incredible, and that's going to be a tough out in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Speaking of which, um, you talk about deadline pickups, Anthony DeClaire, and this has been a growing trend as well, right, Anna? I think you look at DeClaire over, say, the last month. I got the numbers since the All-Star break, 14 points in 13 games. Three games so far with Tampa, two goals, two assists, four points. Is this when the Lightning turned things on, Anna? Uh, I've said this at the trade deadline that Duclair was probably my favorite under the radar pickup for Tampa Bay just because I don't know when he's going to get the respect he deserves, but he definitely does deserve it. He's been a 30 goal scorer in this league with Florida. Now he has four points in his first three games of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Tampa's looking pretty decent right now too, guys. Like they've won three in a row. For me, it seems like they're definitely securing that number one wild card spot in the Eastern Conference and the second Second one's up to grabs. I don't know if, if Toronto's going to falter a little bit and we're going to see some switching around there, but it, Tampa's making the playoffs, like for sure. I have no doubt in my mind. Yeah, they're a lock at this point, which uh, they've come a long way. They've had some spotty losses this year. They withstood the absence of Vasilevsky earlier in the year and now Sergachev for the past month or two. Um, you know, that's a huge loss. So give them a lot of credit. A boost in secondary scoring from Duclair, two goals, two assists, plus five, a power play point, seven shots in his first three games. It's just a guy that uh, is, it's a breath of fresh air to get him out of San Jose, let's be honest, right? Um, it's not surprising that uh, exposure to this elite talent in Tampa Bay is making him look like the player of old, Nick. Oh, it, it's very similar to like his time in Florida. Like I, I know in San Jose, you're under the microscope. You're one of the top players on that roster. And now he can just go out and do his thing. It's a contract year. You know, you get the attachment like Stamkos and who knows when you'll be on the ice with Kucherov and I think this is a guy's value that's just boosted by the game. And when you look at Tampa, I think this is the time of year where they, you know, they turn things on a bit. They know the Stanley Cup playoffs are just around the corner, and the goaltending has been a bit better lately. Victor Hedman's having an all-world season. Braden Point gets six points in a game last week. Nobody talks about it. Kucherov had five. Like, this is what Tampa does. They lull you to sleep, and then they take over. Uh, another sleeper team I like down the stretch, who obviously we were big on in the first half, was Arizona. Um, Nick Schmaltz is a guy I don't think ever gets the respect he deserves in the fantasy world, but uh, Pete, the last nine games, he has 13 points. And again, the perfect example of a player you want to ride in the fantasy playoffs because he's producing right now. Right. You know the guys on the Coyotes that are really good, even though they're going to be missing the playoffs once again. You know Ingram's been great this year when healthy. The season spiraled out of control when he was out with the injury. Schmaltz is great. Keller is great. Kraus is great. Um, I have a lot of good things to say about some of those secondary guys at different spurts this year. But yeah, Nick Schmaltz, it's good to see him turning it around because that's the guy when he's healthy, Anna, you're expecting close to a point per game based on the past couple of seasons. 
Yeah, and that's exactly where he's been performing as of late. Nine points in his last six games. And this is the time of year, guys, where I feel like the Coyotes always play spoiler to every team. Like, they're not going to make the playoffs. I thought they would, but they disappointed me yet again. But this is the time of year where all those teams aiming to get the best position in the postseason always get frustrated because the Coyotes come out of nowhere and kind of ruin their hopes a little bit. Yeah, we'll chalk it up to the crease. Uh, another guy I would look at is Sean Dursey. I wonder if he has a strong finish to the season. It's been a so-so year. Started off really hot. The middle half, not so <laughs> great. And uh, lately, I think he's uh, getting some points and get back on the board. And there's less pressure, right? Um, Uri Slavkovsky is another guy. I know he's not on the list this week, but the guy's been playing like a 70-point player the last, like, Three weeks at least, uh, you know, month, month and a half, which is great to see for the Montreal Canadiens. Minimal pressure. I think you want to attack teams like that in general this time of year where they can just go out and play hockey. And Pete, I think Chicago is a perfect example of that, right? Right. And you're going to see different guys on these inconsistent teams that will make a big difference in the fantasy playoffs. Yep. Dursey is one of them. Dursey could have a four assist game with two on the power play during the fantasy playoffs and win you your league. Uh, Zach Benson, couple of for Buffalo, a couple of multi-point games this past week, probably made a difference for somebody that picked him up as a streaming option, and you're going to see that with Pinto and a lot of these different guys uh, on a per game basis. Uh, any given game, they could they could tilt the scale for you, Anna. They really could. And Shane Pinto is a guy, too, with the Ottawa Senators. Once again, like their offense is going to produce regardless of how they're performing as a team. They're kind of down and out. But I would take a flyer on pretty much anyone in Ottawa's offense because they really get going like game after game. Like they've had a couple of bad games as of late. But any given night, if I had to roll my dice on just getting some guy to put up some shots on goal, some points on the board, like any of the Ottawa guys is a pretty decent bet, Nick. It is uh, Ottawa's time to shine this uh, this late in the season, and we'll see what they do down the stretch here. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I really, really enjoyed the Colorado-Edmonton game over the weekend, and specifically Sean Walker. I was trying to figure out what all the buzz was about this guy at the deadline. Goes for a crazy return. Of course, Ryan Johansson's in that deal, but they get the first rounder, and now I could see why. Like, watch that game. Skates like the win. I think you compliment you know guys like McCarr and others on the back end. That is a scary, scary Colorado team and Sean Walker pizza guy we're looking at this week on the waiver wire I mean look at all the guys over the years right Nachuskin went there and was like a playoff MVP for them pretty much as their third or fourth scorer Lekkinen has been outstanding ever since putting on the burgundy uh, Devon Taves is an elite defenseman after being a pretty good one with the Islanders but not good enough to stay in the mix for them they traded him for a couple of picks and now you see the same thing with Walker Georgiev you see the same thing Everybody gets better when they go to the Avalanche, Anna, so this is not surprising. He was putting up some good underlying metrics or edge metrics I was seeing with Philly, so good on the Avalanche for noticing and taking advantage. Pete's our resident edge guy over here, giving you all of the deep cut information. Colorado's just Colorado, guys. Like, this is a team that you can't go wrong with as well, and they actually do win games. And all of these guys, when they're healthy and they are healthy, this is, like, a good, like, point to note. Like, the Avalanche usually have some sort of big injury concern. Nachushkin's back. Nathan McKinnon looks as good as ever. Rantanen's fine, and that kind of allows them to spread the wealth up and down their lineup, and you're seeing that with the way the Avs are playing right now. Guys, don't forget the edge material from Pete is brought to you by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL, Nick. Very well done. Uh, Ryan Johansson, of course, the one outlier on Colorado, okay? That's the one guy who goes there. It's like, nah, it ain't working out here. I want to get into the crease a bit. I know people this time of year need goaltending direly. Marc-Andre Fleury is a guy I own in one of my leagues, and I'm happy I held on to him. I didn't know what was going to happen with Minnesota, but we've been saying all season long, the Wild make the playoffs. That's what they do. I can't go that far as to say they're going to make it this year. They're involved in the conversation. But Marc-Andre Fleury and, uh, is having himself a last month. Uh, since the All-Star break, 8-2-1, 2.11, a 924, and one shutout. At the very least, I'm starting him every game. I think you should be like flurries when he plays well, he plays really well and he's strung together like a couple of really impressive performances as of late too. Like he had a really solid outing against St. Louis. He's been looking really decent for the squad. And I don't know if I'm going to like count out the Minnesota wild just yet because they're right in the hunt. Vegas is in the second wild card spot right now with 79 points. Minnesota it has 74. So they're just like five points out. It's so close. And the way this team is, 
is playing and all their pieces looking healthier and healthier on a nightly basis, like Kirill Kaprizov is finally scoring goals pretty much every single game, I wouldn't necessarily count out the Minnesota Wild. Like Nashville, the way they've been playing, guys, also shout out Great. to them. 8-0-2, yeah. oh, no losses in regulation in their last 10 games. Like, awesome for them. Great streaming option, but I don't think that's going to last. And look at the schedule for Minnesota coming up. It's, you know, nothing's favorable this time of year. Nothing's automatic. But at Anaheim, at L.A., and home against St. Louis, one of the teams that is in their whereabouts that they're chasing. I like that schedule a lot more than I like the upcoming schedule for, say, Buffalo, who has to go to Western Canada and play Vancouver and Edmonton and Calgary and teams like that. I don't love their chances of getting through that uh, to finish up their five-game road trip. But Minnesota... Uh, this is favorable. Both those teams about four or five points out. So within striking distance, keep note of the schedule. And again, yeah, exactly. And, and that's what Minnesota does. Like every year they're sniffing around the playoffs and they've been there before. Like I just can't discount that team. And I get, you guys are right. Like even on, on the Preds, I mean, they've been so hot. You would have to think they're going to go the other way. So at the very least, just as a, a hockey fan, I would love to see a race down the stretch here. Calgary's probably not going to be in it, guys, but I think Dustin Wolf deserves a shout-out. I think he's the future in between the pipes. Back-to-back uh, -back wins for him, Pete. Three goals against in the last 70 shots. He is the future in that crease for the Calgary Flames. Right, and it's, too, it's hard to get too high on Calgary's long-term trajectory, but at least you know that's a prospect with pedigree. We've been waiting to see him for a while. If they trade Jacob Markstrom in the offseason, they don't have to. But if he wants out or they want to make that move like we thought they might before the deadline, it would open the door for Wolf and Keeper and Dynasty Leagues. Again, it's not a team that like you're gravitating towards for these types of formats, but that particular player at a scarce goaltending position is worth picking up and stashing and potentially keeping when you have to make your decision before the deadline sometime in the summer or something like that. I don't know, with the Calgary Flames, especially if you're just taking a look at them in a single game and looking for some value there, this is one team that can trade away literally every piece they have and for some reason still string together a couple of wins. And <laughs> some of these guys they've gotten in return, I feel like we don't hype them enough. Like Sharon Govich is a player that I'm taking a look at in Dynasty Leagues as well right now in fantasy with the way he's been playing. Like the guy's only 25 and he has nine points, five goals in his last six games. He's just two goals away from being a 30 goal scorer, only played 67 games like he's a brand new player in Calgary so there is value beyond this season with the Flames Ryan Husk has done a great job there and I think you're so right like the Tyler Toffoli deal we saw it and we're like wow the devil's got a steal there it's like no Craig Conroy knew exactly what he was doing a 30 goal score in Igor Sharangova just needed opportunity and maybe a change of scenery and it's uh, worked dividends uh, so far with the Calgary Flames I want to get into Detroit a bit, guys, and Anna, maybe pick your brain on what's going on with the Red Wings. They've dropped eight of the last nine. Is this solely on Dil Dylan Larkin um, not being in the lineup? He's been out since March 2nd with a lower body injury, by the way. Could come back as soon as Tuesday against the Columbus Blue Jackets, or is this a deeper-rooted issue for them? Uh, yeah, Dylan Larkin's a great player, guys, but it's not just Dylan Larkin's team and no one else. Like, this team had a decent amount of depth, and they just haven't showed up. Like, they have Alex Dabrinkit, they have Patrick Kane, they have Lucas Raymond, they have all of these guys that can produce, and... I, I, I don't know what's going on with Detroit. I feel like every year we have the same conversation about which one of these three teams, Ottawa, Buffalo, Detroit, is going to finally make the playoffs and finally be a team that's competitive again. And I feel like at this time, like the Ides of March, guys, they prove us all right once again with all three of them being like, it's just not their time yet. That's the same story we've been hearing, Pete, for like the last like three, four seasons. Yeah, I mean, there's still some weak links on that team defensively, even though they have, like, the goal that Sprong scored the other day was huge, yeah. right? What was yeah. it, the second goal against Buffalo to take the lead or the third goal to put the game away? I mean, some timely offense that that team gets at different times, especially when they're at home, but they still have, like, Gostas Bear on, on the roster. Yeah. I'm not completely sold on the goaltending long-term. Lions been a good story the past couple of years, for different teams, but not a guy that I like fully trust to mask all the defensive issues on a team like that, that we should all remember is still ahead of schedule. We were not expecting them to make the playoffs this year. We were expecting, you know, a Buffalo or an Ottawa that didn't happen. So it was an opportunity for them to get in on the mix ahead of schedule.
Yeah, so trust is a big word, and I can't say I trust Alex Lyon going into the fantasy playoffs. In fact, I think if you own him, I would drop him. Uh, the numbers are staggering, guys. Since the All-Star break, 5-9-0, 4.02873. I, I just can't start a guy like that. I, I think James Reimer, weirdly enough, has been the better option for Detroit the last week and a half, but I'm still so mystified how they could be one of the hottest teams last month, now can't win a game, and is this over... You know, their number one C being out, their captain, or is it deeper rooted? Like, Alex DeBrinkett, where are you at? He had 13 goals in 24 games start the year. Guys, he has six goals in the past 31 games. Like, what happened here? No, it's true. Who are you guys more worried about in terms of an important center coming back uh, before the end of the season to keep the team's playoff chances alive? Are you more worried about Larkin in Detroit? or hurdle with the Golden Knights, who are only a couple of points hanging on to that last playoff spot, and they're still dealing with the injury to Stone and stuff like that. You're probably going to answer Larkin, but I got to mention that like Vegas may not make the playoffs if the recent trends continue. The second someone says that Vegas is not going to make the playoffs, Vegas is going to turn around and go on a heater. <laughs> Nick said that last season, and they ended up winning the Stanley yeah. Cup, so they're listening to you right now. I think Vegas is going to make the playoffs. This is a team that is like, you can't get rid of them. They're going to make the postseason regardless, <laughs> and Hurdle might be a big deal, but I really like the way that Shea Theodore has played, and this is a guy who's missed some time for Vegas, and I feel like he's a big piece back for them. I just think they're going to turn it around. They're going to hold on to that. It's a no-brainer. So my answer would be Dylan Larkin for Detroit, Pete, because I think yeah. that's a team that's going to like struggle to make it in. Yeah, I agree. And again, the numbers are what they are, but this team is so different without Dylan Larkin, where conversely, you look at Vegas, I think they're such a seasoned team. Like They make the playoffs every year. I think they know when to find their groove at the right time. You look at this week, home to Tampa, beatable game. Uh, home to Seattle, beatable game. Uh, home to Columbus, they're going to win that game. They're playing St. Louis, Nashville. Like, they control their own faith, their own destiny. And I I just think they're one of those teams you can rein things in at the right time. Like, you even thought Sunday, that was a really big win. You're playing a Devils team. They got called out by their head coach on Saturday, and you still beat them. So I, I'm at a point where I can never fade the Vegas Golden Knights again for obvious reasons. So my answer would be Dylan Larkin, Pete. They've just been giving up a lot of goals. Like, the goaltending has not been as strong as I thought it was going to be. And in the past couple of weeks, six goals allowed to um, Columbus, seven goals allowed to Buffalo, 4-1 loss at Calgary. So that gets me worried at least about, like, the upcoming games against some of these teams that can score. Nashville can score. Winnipeg can score. Tampa can certainly score. And and all it takes this time of year is, like, one or two losses in a game that you think you should win, like they should probably beat Tampa at home, but I wouldn't be surprised if Tampa won that game six to three and some of the, you know, some of the issues continue to present themselves for Vegas. I, I'm, I, there's, I'm not going to agree with Pete here. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. I, I just like yeah. Pete, like I appreciate you playing devil's advocate here, but like it's the Vegas Golden Knights. Like anything <laughs> that you might be concerned about, we're going to be like, oh man, they won back-to-back -back championships in just like a couple of months because this team just – just can't you can't get rid of them they're like the t one team in the nhl where no matter what you throw at them they're just doing this for the plot at this point yeah i don't know if i'd call them resilient but there's just uh, a je ne sais quoi with uh, vegas they're gonna be in the playoffs uh, mark stone might show up uh, <laughs> you know hurdle might show up you just never know who's gonna show up maybe they acquired somebody else stashed him on lti or you just never know with vegas but uh, i'm excited to see like i I think you bought, you talk about teams potentially repeating, like, why not Vegas? I, I love their deadline. Mantas look pretty good so far. You bring in Hannafin on the back end. Uh, Hurdle could be in the mix. Jack Eichel, by the way, over the weekend, I watched that game against Jersey. Looked fantastic. He looked healthy. And it, it's just going to be a bloodbath in the Western Conference. I'm looking forward to that. In the Eastern Conference, I mean, I think the pathway is there for a variety of different teams. I want to tie this into the Mitch, Mitch Marner, excuse me, Injury replacements, uh, you know, a high ankle sprain. They're, they're saying it's mild. I think if you're a fantasy owner and you got Toronto this week, uh, they got a four-game slate. So Pontus Holmberg's a guy who's been elevated to the top line. Bob McMahon had some looks over weekend on that line. Important to stress, too, that power play, really, really struggling. One for the last 22, but Timothy Lilligren on PP1. So I think if you're looking for streamer options, I would look there. Externally, Jake DeBrusque, uh, Wyatt Johnson's been great for Dallas. Nick Schmaltz, as we referenced. 
and Lucas Raymond. What do you guys make of the injury, Pete, uh, in Toronto? Well, also, don't be married to just picking up a forward to replace Marner. Like, sometimes with the schedule and stuff, you could get a guy that's playing on Monday and Wednesday and pick up a goalie to replace him or even a defenseman from a safe team. Like I saw, Dmitry Orlov is really worth picking up right now with six points in his past three games, two on the power play, a ton of shots and a ton of hits in that span and a good plus minus for Carolina. So it's just one of those things like where you can look at a different position and maybe work in a defenseman for a few more games than you'd be able to for your forward where you're always trying to play, fit everybody into your lineup on a Saturday night or a Thursday night, which is sometimes tough to do. Yeah, I feel like those two guys in Carolina are giving me flashbacks of when Washington won the Stanley Cup. It's very trippy to see, but for the Maple Leafs, I would definitely, like Bobby McMahon stands out to me because even though Holmberg's on the top line right now, McMahon's still seeing like second line minutes on a pretty solid line with Domi who has been playing well as of late and William Nylander he had like five shots on goal in that game against Carolina where the Hurricanes ended up taking the win but really impressed me despite not getting his name on the score sheet so he's a player I would look at internally the external options we gave you though with Nick Schmaltz and White Johnson those are like that's the way to go Nick yeah there, there, there's a couple locks and a couple good value plays there I, I think again going back to that Toronto Carolina game I can't believe how underowned Evgeny Kuznetsov is right now like we, we've I know we've hammered this over the last two weeks but it's mystifying to me again this guy was on the bird uh, to, to leave what was it Hershey wherever he was playing in the American Hockey League he was on the bird like seven minutes later this guy is fired up he's pumped to be there I saw Brittimore's comments about the bird celebration over the weekend I think there's so much value in a Kuznetsov right now, especially this week, Pete. A four-game slate for Carolina. He's feeling good. He's happy and looking for a Stanley Cup again. Yeah, I mean, he could go point per game the rest of the season sure. very easily based on his track record. And we would all like to see it based on where his career went south in recent seasons, uh, even prior to this year when he was in the player assistance program. But, yeah, I'm excited about this fit for him. Gensel scored his first goal with the Hurricanes in the most recent game. So these guys are going to be clicking again. Like I still think Carolina is the favorite to win the cup, most likely to win the cup uh, based on all the moves at the deadline and based on their past playoff pedigree. The one preseason pick I had that looks like it's coming true is Carolina winning the cup. But giving this tiniest bit of love to guys, maybe just in terms of a prop to the other side of that Gensel trade, Michael Bunting for shots. (laughs) You know, one bright spot for Pittsburgh. He has 20 shots on goal across his first six games with the Penguins. He usually is hitting that 4-3-4 mark on a nightly basis, has multiple goals. Like, that's a guy to look at on an individual night slate to give some hope to anyone who's watching Penguins games this time of year. (laughs) I will have the NHL action collaboration on Wednesday, but I wanted to pass along this note I got from our, our guy Michael Leboff over the weekend. He simply sent... You guys were talking about Nashville earlier. Andrew Brunette for Jack Adams, 100-1. to With the way they're going and finishing this season, nobody really expected him to be in the playoffs. I think it's worth a flyer. We'll talk more about it on the NHL Action Collaboration, but 100-1 to for Andrew Brunette, Nick? <laughs> Wasn't he just on the chirp? Yes, he was. He was on the chirp. Right right before the team kind of took off, he, he joined Darren Millard for a little conversation. So a little chirp bump, if you will. I like that. A, a huge chirp bump right there. You know, it's also a bump. Uh, week 23 mailbag edition coming up later this week, right, Pete? Lots of questions about the fantasy playoffs, no? Right. Unfortunately, there will probably be some more injuries to talk about between now and then. Uh, one that I wanted to mention before we wrap is uh, this injury to... Gabriel Velarde, who's out indefinitely for the Jets, who we like a lot. Um, Toffoli's been great since that trade. He's one of the top fantasy performers of the week. That's the obvious thing. Is there anything about Alex Ayafalo that you like now that he's up top with Connor and Shifley, Nick? Um, aside from uh, Alex Ayafalo, you... <laughs> I follow you home, the fantasy team name of the year. Um, I don't know. Like, he's a guy I would stream. I, I wouldn't look long term. I think the guy's tone there, Monahan, the big boys, obviously. But Monahan's a guy you could probably get in the waiver wire. I think you go game by game, Anna. But I think if you're looking at the schedule, uh, good luck this week, Winnipeg, a four game slate. 
I like the Jets. I think they have a lot of value for me. Like, even though I follow on the top line with Connor and Shifley, the second line kind of sticks out more to me with the way they've been performing with Sean Monahan and Ehlers and Toffoli. So that's kind of the line that I'm looking at. Sean Monahan was like a big ad for this team, guys. Winnipeg's looking pretty good. So there's other options that intrigue me more. The top four defensemen on Winnipeg, too. Like, try to get a piece of them. DeMello, Dylan, Pionk. Those are good streaming options for a safe, structured team that'll get the job done at the end of the day. Okay, we're going over our contracted time limit. One last promo from Bob Bender. (laughs) Shameless promo. Go check out NHL Backstory, please. If you go hit play, it means a lot to me. It it means a lot to our guy, Tal Pinchevsky, all right? Tal Pinchevsky needs these listens, so please go check out NHL Backstory. I'm not begging. It's worth your time. Excellent storytelling. Gets into all the deadline stuff. Our guy, Arda Ocal, who is in the Jersey Mike's draft voices, it does a great job. So please, go check it out. Do yourself a favor uh, here as the uh, the month of March winds down. NHL Backstory. And uh, not not to spoil too much, it's pretty much the story of Mike Sillinger, which we all love in this day and age of the NHL. So what's high, Bowen? Thanks. Thanks to producer Bob Benner for Pete Jensen and Anna Dua. I'm Nick Alberga. You've been listening to NHL Fantasy on Ice, delivered by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL.